Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our final break show and today we're joined by Dave Bugle and Ray Shannon. Ray or? Roy? Keenan. Roy Shannon from the Big Kickoff Sport Podcast. Correct. Thanks very much for coming yeah, on. Yeah, delighted. Well, 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 nice. uh, Johnny, of course. Um, we'll start things off with the lineup from the big... Well, I think, I think everyone looked at the lineup. Uh, for the match and everyone looked at the squad for the match and we're hoping that is exactly what we wanted we wanted fresh blood with a sprinkle of experience and we got that and then the formation was interesting because I think everyone's looked for two up front haven't they yeah they wanted two up front and three at the back even the three at the back it wasn't necessarily even the three at the back because I think Ireland can work with a 4-4-2 four, four, I don't think 4-4-2 four, four, is dead and a lot of people think 4-4-2 four, yeah. four, is dead if it's, if it's done right I mean if there's anyone who can do a defensive 4-4-2 four, four, it would be Martin O'Neill so. but two up front it just we isolate our striker so it, it just needs something up there so I thought straight away I thought it would have been Long and and uh, Maguire, Maguire yeah, up front yeah. that's what I thought as well I thought that would have been just to give that little bit of experience and uh, of course the, the aerial sort of prowess so maybe the little flick ons for Maguire because that's normally the way they play uh, so Hogan and Maguire didn't didn't really sit right with me, but I was delighted to see the two of them play anyhow, nonetheless. So that, that didn't really make a difference. But uh, yeah, I thought I thought they were well set up. That's so how it went from there. That yeah. Kind of thing. What did you say, Dave? Yeah, there was enough new blood in the team for me to be interested because obviously there was that fear, the fact that it's two non-qualified teams, that it was going to be that kind of end of season. You know, it kind of was anyway. But there was enough in it for Ireland for us to be interested. I was more than happy with. Who were in obviously in the middle with Brown and Brown. I was a bit surprised at Brown now to be honest. I thought they'd have somebody else in there. Obviously McLean was in left wing back with Seamus Coleman. I'm not sure whether McLean will be ideal at full back. I think yeah. he might be a bit of a liability there. I'm not hundred percent sure on it. Coleman it would we come talk to a him. little bit about McLean and his position later on. Yeah, yeah, McLean. well then we won't go there. But no, I was more than happy with the lads up front. The style I was hoping because of that I was like Grant we're going to probably try and play a bit more football and not be as direct and not be as kind of what we have been for the last 10 years let alone O'Neill's era um, so beforehand I was more than happy and it was kind of yeah it's a proper game I'm actually interested in watching because there was nothing new blood because that was the big fear that he can talk a nice game put in new players name that big thirty, put in the new bit of fluff and then go back with the usual yeah. they've done that before haven't they they've, they've brought people on for the last 30 yeah. minutes or so and, yeah. and kind of and it's a gesture. That as well. you can it's use that, we talk about that statement like a, I've blooded X amount of players when in yeah. reality it's just yeah. a toss on so, like I think everybody nearly we, we did in our pre-match show I think everybody we predicted the three at the back and well, it wasn't far yeah. off our starting yeah, 11 was, from our starting 11 show 11, yeah, yeah, yeah I watched the clip and uh, the, one, the guy that was kind of sitting where I was he yeah. pretty yeah. nearly had it nailed on apart from I think he had Long no it was just Hendrick from Oiler Dorry, he had Moyer as well. But did he have Long with McCoy? Yeah, no? he had me. Yeah, he did, but we, we I think we had him him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Bully the mill, yeah. <laughs> with the, the overall team that we put together, we voted him. Yeah, but there's only yeah. two from the actual. For Man yeah. O'Neill's yeah. team, that's not bad. No? Yeah, because yeah. usually was a spanner in the works. But I think it was kind of like. It's a I thought like, it was actually a very good blend of uh, experience yeah, and yeah. Uh, new players. Because, you know, we all ideally would look, were like, oh, yeah, new players. But. Realistically, the team you put out, I thought was fair. But it's the perfect, it's the perfect match for it, yeah, isn't it's it? Perfect yeah. plan. I mean, absolutely, you're, you're, to lose. Yeah. You're getting experience mm -hmm. in the national team first. You're getting experience away from home, and you're getting experience in Turkey, which is you're, it's very a good atmosphere. It's a good atmosphere which there. So, mm -hmm. I, it was a, it was the perfect match to blood them in, and I, I don't think they did themselves too much damage, as yeah. in because a lot of them are going to be going out with nerves. As you said, you. Two or three chances before the games come around the the competitive games, so yeah. they're going to be nervous about having to perform. So I think they, I think they. Yeah, but it was nice to have like people like like Seamus Cullen back mm -hmm. captain of the side, and he loves to bring a bit of, you know, he seems to be good with all. Of he the seems to have players. an influence on the team. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He's yeah. Not but just, he seems to it's not just an armband. It's not just a bit of a yeah. a bit of a what do you call it? a bit of a fashion uh, accessory he actually means something to him and he does it a lot about it and after scenes you hear stories about him yeah, being but you in can, touch with you can see it like even like I don't want to go jump too far ahead but even at the end when he was in the interview with Declan Royce and how he spoke about him yeah. there and then and mm. saying how nice it was to bring the young lads in 
and before the game there was a clip of him talking about it too like how proud he is mm-hmm. to play for Ireland do you know what I mean I'm, yeah. I'm sure that bounces off other people it's what a captain needs to be yeah. isn't it he has to be likeable and he has to motivate yeah. and that, he has to boat with them and Royce game. was the big draw of the starting 11 to be yeah. honest because yeah, yeah. there's the rumours and then there's obviously well, thought, England sniff around him he's kind of put it to bed but you you still kind of go I still want to the rumours still haven't gone away though exactly. Exactly. Even and he played well they're probably so gonna, they're probably it's great for us but it's not good I'm not worried now no, genuinely, really not, yeah. Not really. No, I don't see. I don't see him changing either. Well, he's already. He's gone out to the under twenty one qualifier. So yeah, if he's right. if he's not too bothered, like yeah, no, I'll be happy with that. Yeah. I d- I'm confident. Well, I thought anyway with the with the game. I thought I thought we limit limited Turkey to like not that many chances. Like thought the like, the only chances they really have are like shots from really far out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They weren't getting anything into the box right yeah, for we, the first twenty minutes anyway. We mentioned this morning a little bit in the first half. I noticed it was a bit bit easy going through the middle because the three weren't as quite as tight they were trying to spread across the midfield you, I thought you, you could definitely notice that with the three at the well, back there was it, no anchor man yeah it, yeah. It, yeah it wasn't all tied together yeah. And, and yeah. You, you could tell that they only had a, a short time in, in a camp yeah. together yeah. Um, it, it probably is exciting because it's the formation I think that we have to go with three at the back simply because we have a serious lack of wingers at the moment yeah. um, you look with that squad but we don't have a lack of wing backs that's the thing that's the, that's the thing that's why I think it's perfect I and, was surprised that yeah. Stevens didn't get a look in at all yeah, mm. but yeah, like I can't understand why he didn't. It's a perfect game to to, to try out that kind of person. Yeah. You could see, you could see Stephen Ward playing in that position. He'd get up and down well, the line. He likes to play wing back uh, anymore. Yeah, but again, yeah, he's, he's definitely going to be one of the that wing back that's a year a, old that sits, sits at a full yeah. back, isn't he? Really? Yeah. yeah. But, but you could see him playing in there. You could see him doing a job in there. You could oh, see well, McLean yeah. do a job yeah. in there. Yeah. So you already know that they're going to be able to do some sort of a job there. So he would have been ideal at some stage, you know. So yeah. well, I just thought, I just thought. McLean in the first half as a wing back was very ineffective. Yeah, and he just you know, he didn't really offer much. And uh, fair enough, it's not his position, and it's yeah. one of the hardest positions to play in football. Yeah, and to be honest, anyone had the energy, Tim, that would yeah. be able to do it. So then it comes down to his football ability and footballing brain. And yeah, but I think he was a bit nervous about. Don't call that. I think, <laughs> but I think he was a bit nervous about getting forward. So I think he, he just. Stay back more so than getting forward. His natural in, instinct in is case. to go forward, obviously. So that's why, it, that's where the, the doubts would be for left wing back for him. Will yeah. he have it when we're up against whoever the number one seed may be or whoever it is in the big qualifiers? Mm-hmm. Will he have it, the discipline to be able to do the defensive side of things? Will he be able to because yeah. he's not going to be. But there's no guarantee that we're going to stay with that formation. True. I know but if we were to, yeah, yeah no, I that'd be know. the fear. But like, um, I'm just saying, like from. You look at Coleman, he just does it naturally. He's up and down, up and down. But mm. I think because McLean was so like worried about what's going on behind him, I think he was a bit yeah, was comfort afraid time. to gonna go forward. Yeah. Just but is that, is that a position that Robbie Brady can sit in? I'd like yeah, to see, I'd, lo- I'd love mm. to see Brady. Yeah, he's very good at it, even when he plays left back. Like, yeah. um, I think yeah. slightly more Serbia yeah, yeah. when he played in the second yeah, half at left back, and he. he Bossed the game from left back. Like, mm. It's a wonderful left foot delivery yeah. as well, yeah. and you know that run from deep. I think he's he's slightly better. But that put McLean in trouble, and if they st- stuck to that formation, then maybe, maybe not. Point, maybe not could man, do. Yeah. I think I think McLean would be better coming off the bench. Yeah. Um, it but, it's, but, it's again, he, but then again, you, you look at it, he's not playing for West Brom at the minute too. So there's that. Exactly. There's the, he's lack of match fitness too. So there is that sort yeah. of the thing as well. I mean, there's no doubt in his um, his heart for, and he does seem to go up another level. Same as Duffy. Yeah. Um, speaking of Duffy, he made a great uh, clearance or a block from one. There was the, one. It was about thirty yards out, back. and yeah. everyone kind of backed off. And yeah. you could probably tell it's either going wide or this is compared to company now. Bang! He stuck just, the head out, took it, away, took yeah. it for the team. But he's that all skilled defender. We talked about it once in relation to like Liverpool. Even if he was playing with Liverpool this year, I think he would easily stop about yeah. five or ten of our goals that we can see this year from just being a bloody good defender, regardless of whether he can play football or not. But in fairness, Duffy showed enough for me with with Brighton this year. And even the other day, he was dropping off. He was sitting in pockets looking for he's, he's, He can play football. Yeah. Like a lot of the, the boys, we just need to give them the, thing I liked, the room to do it. The thing I liked was when we had goal kicks, the defenders were coming short yeah. and just out of the box for it, looking for it. And that, like, that, mm. like, people might go, oh, but well, they only did it once or twice. But it's an improvement. Like, what what, what do people want? Like, they're yeah. trying to do what, what, what people want to see. They yeah. are, to be fair. I know there was a lot of long balls. But then there was that lovely ball by Hendrick through to, to Hogan. Yeah. Hogan made the run and Hendrick seen it. It's that simple. That's what Hogan's professional right. footballers can do. Yeah, it was a beautiful He's seen ball. the run. Perfect. He's got to take that on his right foot though, doesn't he? He's got to cut in when he's... I don't know. He Look, does in hindsight. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Again, yeah. If, he yeah. Gets, if he doesn't get the heavy touch that he got, it's... you I mean, know, it's, That's it's that step up there. Him, There's so. so many players there that made their debuts. It's that yeah. step up. Yeah. Like, those think, little things. I think that if that's his third or fourth international game, I think that's a goal. 
probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. No, I'd agree. But I, 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 the positive thing is, is he's getting into those positions. And how many people are saying, oh, long ball, all game, long ball? That wasn't a long ball. That was a through ball. Yeah. Cut the defence and the yeah. midfield open. Boom. And it's a start, and it's something that the midfield need to reteach themselves, especially playing for Ireland. That it, obviously, maybe they're being told we can do this now so have a look for us have a look for the runs and put them in because the guys can do it there's no denying they can do it it's, yeah, it's going to take a while to we change do, the we mindset we do have good midfielders we do have good centre because I think we have to learn to play this more because I'm always banging on about it because the defensive side of things and shutting down against your big elite there's only about 7 or 8 of them really in Europe and then the rest of them are I think we can compete with pretty much everyone yeah, else yeah, so I, there's I only really so. two games in a group stage where we really have to do that yeah but the thing is now so the, that's why I think we should be working on this yeah, because that's what we're going to be playing mostly with the Nations League. You know, yeah. we're playing against that standard now, so we need to open up. We need and to be say, competitive. Can we compete a bit more instead of sitting back and, yeah. back and Denmark showed us what we shouldn't do? You know, yeah, of course. And I think like we definitely saw a formation change. I think there's still a mentality change required as well. Massive, in this team. like Henrik's ball that just cuts the lines. We need to see more and more of that, uh, and particularly like I think that was in the first half where we we get a free kick and. Duffy Duffy gets steps over the ball and you can see Brown is pulling off just like what he's used to in his club mm. in his club. Pass it to me here, we play, and he's like, no, 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 we hoof it long. It's le- less of that. I think we need to. And that- I suppose that's why them one or two players need to come in because yeah. they're not so well drilled in the way O'Neill yeah. has been playing for the last. It's that whole intelligence, years. like because there is the players there that are more than capable of doing it, and because Coleman does it as well. Yeah, there we go. Like these, these are all Henrik, you know, Coleman, Rice mm. was was excellent again on the yeah, ball, like. Yeah. And Duffy as well. Yeah, they're all. It's just that mentality change, and because I, I do think we'll be more, we're better equipped to play that type of game, and just those little balls through the lines, you know, and stuff like that, rather than just yeah, because like we we have the players to play in, in in a different style of play, which I think is going to be a lot more effective to the players that we have, and it's those little balls through the line which Rice really excites me, excited me. I have to say, mm. um, I know there was the debate before and <laughs> about who's going to play for, but he has to be. He's almost got to a stage where, without getting overly excited, I think the team nearly has to be built around him in a way, whether that's in the middle of defence or the middle of midfield. I think that's the debate now, because I'm jumping on the from the second half, I think because of, I wouldn't want to, not as a detriment to what we have, but I think midfield, I think he has to start in there first. I think I think we've plenty of defence. Yeah. I'd rather him be in there, because I, I think he did a hell of a lot more than what anyone else has been in there for, for a long time. The problem is, you look at, say, particularly Brown and Hendrick, they, in their club, in their club um, setups, they're pretty much used to being playing as number eights. Really, with a, with a, with a solid six behind um, them. Brown, not so much anymore. Uh, he, he, pushed pushed he, he pushes up a little bit more. He doesn't really. He's he, not, since he's been pushed up, he's been brilliant. Though. Yeah, mm. I think he's more effective there when he's a little higher up. He is the but neither Hendrick or. Or Brown are effective when they're getting the ball off the, off the back for that quarterback position and get the ball and flick it yeah. in. And flick well, it's just, it. I don't think that anyone knew um, in the first half who was going to be the anchor. And do you ever like when you're when you're playing football? That and was you obvious have, in the you first have a half. three midfield. You're not playing formation, and you, like you, the threes are pushed forward. You're not sure who should be yeah. back. But then you seen it like in the second half. I think it was Hendrick and Brown were rushing back to get behind the ball. So it made sense then, and then to when we started to actually yeah. look, look better, like more, more, more of a shape about us. Yeah, you know, um, but they are very, they're very rigid with the tree. They don't. There's no rotation, even simple, basic rotation. That if they're getting marked out of it, when we get balls out wide, that if Brown's sitting, he'll sit and he'll and he'll stay marked instead of just moving out and letting someone drop drop back into the space. So. I, I worry, this is my big concern, is I worry that no matter who you have, if you have uh, mm-hmm. Rice or anyone in there, that is the work being done on the training ground to actually facilitate that kind of play? Yeah, or is he hoping that they're just going to be able to play? And, yeah. and it kind it's of been looks a like that's a redundant for position for far too long, in my opinion. Uh, you watch all the awful games over the last few years where we're not playing football. The guys have no interest. They're, they're obviously told, don't bother looking for it because try and get up and support. And the habit, I could see the habit was happening again, especially in the first half. There was no one kind of, the guys were there ready to move it from the back. I didn't see enough of the guys coming in saying, give me the bloody ball. That's what midfielders are supposed to do. Give me thing and I'll get on with it. (laughs) No, but that's what I'd be like, give me it and let's go. You know, and that's where we, it's going to take four or five games, I think, to get that going again. Yeah, but the only only thing is, and we've had Kieran on before, the coaching and that's, they only get a couple of days a year to, to work on stuff like but that. But they're professional footballers. You do this three, six, five. They are. It's very simple aspects of the game. It's very simple kind of instructions. 
I want you to get in and get on the get on the ball today. Okay, because last time I checked, Hendrick does it with Burnley. The guys do it week in week out. They don't play long ball football in in the championship, the Premier League much anymore. The guys know how to do it very much. I'm not saying it can be done immediately on game day for Ireland, but there's no reason why after a couple of sessions and after a couple of games and after a couple of friendlies they'll be back in the in the zone again and doing it. It's obvious, in my opinion, they're told mm. to kind of don't get too involved. Let's not risk it. Let's not lose the ball yeah. 30, 40 yards out. I, I see, think I they see can what you mean. Switch with, it, if you know like, what I mean. They flew out on what Sunday, Monday yeah. they had the awards, and then they have a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to work on stuff. So yeah. there's not that much time. And as well as that, the, the other players are playing at different clubs, playing different mm-hmm. uh, formations and different systems that are their managers mm-hmm. employed. So it's hard for O'Neill in his defence to try and. Mm-hmm. Because you have different players playing different systems for each club as well. So I think that's where it comes into. And that's where it lies into. Well, obviously, as and I agree in that sense, but that's where if he's going to go with this, he needs to stick with it now and try and work on it for the next four or five games in order yeah, for it yeah, to get you. Yeah. So, man. yeah, so it's not going to happen overnight. You know, well, no, for one, certainly know that. And it wasn't as if this is a competitive game that we had to win. <laughs> the World no. Cup has been turned like Unfortunately, there was that feel at, at, on times, wasn't it, that it was that kind of. I think, well, I think people just wanted to get over the, the hump of, yeah. of Denmark, mm-hmm. but. Personally, like I wasn't too disappointed. No, I was just happy no. to see new blood brought in. One hundred percent. Um, <clears throat> anyway, for their for uh, for their goal. Anyway, it was a couple of times we got caught out. Um, mm. I think it was a, a, in the, actually just to just go back. Um, there was one point. I think it was a cross or a corner. I can't remember. But Duffy cuts across Doyle, mm. and nearly puts it into his own net. Yeah. So mm. there was the times when the ball was coming out from wide that was putting us under pressure. But then they get the corner, and they do some kind of something. Off the training ground, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was clever on, on their part, poor by our uh, standards. <coughs> Do you get caught out, yeah? I think, yeah, there was there was a, a, a danger sign for a corner previous to that, and but it can, it, that can be simple. That can be just switching off once. Yeah, well, McLean get, get switched punished. off, and that's McLean. He switched off. He, well, away. he just lost his marker. He Remember lost him. Your man, your man made the moving forward and then just dropped back, and, yeah. and he lost him. That simple. But Tosin was key as well to yeah. hold off. I think Fair. it was Declan Rice. Yeah, but mm-hmm. uh, you can get punished for that. But again, that uh, that's one thing that. Isolated them from us in the whole game. That yeah. you know defined the game as a one 0 victory. Never other play that, on Turkey's part. I mean, if we score, we'd be <laughs> oh yeah, you'd be you'd be gallivanting yeah. around. Yeah. Even <laughs> the, the, the short the short time frame of coaching, we were still Martin O'Neill would have been taking credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute tactical genius. <laughs> <laughs> no, but see, like, but then, like again, but what, what I, I didn't see Turkey have that many chances. And like, fair enough, they got that goal. Yeah, but t- it was a fairly even game. One hundred percent. Mm-hmm. But they're going to be very hard to have chances if you have eight men behind the ball. So, mm-hmm. And that's what they have. They have a, Ireland have a back five and, and, and three in front. So, as you said, that, those three did spread out a little bit and that's where the long-range shots came in. Mm-hmm. Second half. Um, no, I thought Seamus Coleman, uh, was, he was a bit off the pace. And by his standards, I know it's international football mm-hmm. and he's slowly getting back into it. Now, I don't think he's going to be like that, but it, it kind of showed that he, he's still only getting back from the injury. Yeah. So I don't think we should be relying on him too heavily. No. Also, it's a different role for him. Because, I mean, if he, when he's playing for Ireland, he's playing on the right-hand side and he's not constantly, he does it with everything, constantly overlapping, overlapping, yeah. overlapping. There's no one to overlap. He's in that position on his own. So yeah. he's up and down and he's getting on the ball. Yeah. So it's a different it's a different thing yeah, for him as well. And, you know, it's, it's the simple thing. He's been pretty much running on drilling the last couple of weeks since yeah. he's coming back. He's yeah. been back after a serious injury. A, a long-term, we have no concerns yeah. whatsoever. He's happy to have him back. Exactly. It's no, so great to yeah, see him so back on the pitch. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, he comes off anyway and uh, Matt Doherty comes on and gets his debut. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like for like and then I think it was uh, McGuire came off for long. Mm. Which I thought, you know, I'd say maybe uh, Allardyce and O'Neill maybe had an agreement because, yeah. you know, yeah. all this shit with the previous Everton managers and stuff like yeah. that it might be good to have someone like Allardyce and him kind of we'll talk about it just give him an hour take him off same yeah. with Maguire I'd say because he was only back from injury too yeah. Yeah. I'd say um, was it Alex O'Neill they'd be a bit manager? like for look, well not 100% like for like but they're kind of similar so it's probably wise yeah. to kind of have Long and Maguire not necessarily together because it could easily work but I'd say that's where it came from as well and obviously looking after him is a, is a big thing yeah but I, I didn't think I thought Doherty done well when he came on he, he, didn't, he didn't do a lot Wrong. We didn't do uh, anything great, but he wasn't intimidated. He was quite cool and calm. There were one or two instances, and even Horgan when he came on as well. To be honest, I was quite happy with he exactly what I remember from Dundalk, and obviously the bits and pieces that I've seen with Preston. He's a guy who's quite comfortable on the ball, and a guy who's quite the kind of type of play that we want to see. So they didn't look intimidated. Everyone that yeah. came in, especially the guys in the second half, they looked quite cool I thought and calm. We, and we got more into the game when they came on. I know Colin went off, and I thought they got a bit of game. energy. I think we did. But more so, as you said, with Declan Rice going into midfield, because anytime he got on the ball, yeah. 
he didn't give the ball away simply when he got on the ball. Even in tricky situations, even in tight areas, mm. he would give him simple passes all the time, which looked simple passes. But I was looking at Hendricks in the first half, and he was giving the ball away on numerous occasions, and a couple of like counter attacks that could have cost us. Only for Turkey didn't have the, the quality, but he does look effective there. And it's someone in there who's going to dictate the play that's going to bring all these other people in. Yeah, and we need that back. We do, yeah, and it's the big debate of where he's going to be best served in the in the Irish team. Is yeah. it is it as on the defence as a two or a three or in midfield? We're blessed with any with centre backs. Yeah, right? he's probably a better defender. And centre mid, yeah. yeah. He's probably a better defender in my mind from the little I've seen of West Ham. But I think to this Irish team, he's going to be more effective as that number six. Potentially, yeah, I um, definitely yeah, think so at the moment. I know Myler's there as well. But you've also got Arthur to true, come back to true, yeah. and McCarthy yeah. if, he's, if he heals up okay. Mm. So you do, one, you, you do have those as well, which means that even if they come back, that means that Royce could maybe push even more, not number 10, but number 8. Yeah. yeah. And competition yeah. is a big thing, you know, and as you're saying, you're rhyming off five or six last there, that's competition. All of a sudden your levels go up regardless yeah, of what you're Yeah, but you forget about some of our midfielders because they you weren't know, even in the squad. Right, that's right. what happens. Once there's competition, all of a sudden everyone goes up that natural level because like, I'm not giving up my spot. Yeah. So it's healthy. Yeah, it's yeah. just unfortunately up front. That's the dilemma. Yeah, but to be fair, we are, I was a lot happier with Hogan's performance more so than Maguire's. I thought yeah. he showed more, but you know, I thought a lot, of, um, a lot was put on uh, Maguire's shoulders unfairly. Oh yeah, we're all expecting to bang it. Yeah, but if you're going to stick the ball in into Maguire's shot, uh, his head every second time you're not going to do anything his, his thing is get the ball into his feet and yeah. he'll start running but there was a couple of times he got the ball to his feet and he lost it yeah, 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 yeah you'll give him that in the first game you know, that's, that's what, that's what I was getting game, to so well, yeah. just say, give, him, give him more uh, games and I think that'll stick more yeah. and mm. he's just given off and in behind but there was a couple of times I think there was one time where he, he got the ball and he looked like he could have went down the middle but he kind of took it out kind of to the right mm. and went to take it off I think he got a corner out of it but mm. it's, it was a good sign that someone's not afraid to run with the ball at a defender I know yeah. Hogan's chance was he and it's that precious few seconds especially with Ireland like if, if we're in them tight games where we don't have a lot of the ball it's nice to have that type of an outlet because it's so precious them extra few seconds to give everyone that chance to get out and try not to sit back as much as we usually do so listen there's plenty of positive as you said and I for one Apart from up front, I'm not, I'm not sure we're lacking. I'm thinking we're lacking in goalkeeper. quantities. Oh, goalkeeper! What can I ask you? What happened with Randolph? Was he was he just? It was, it was just a. He was told to take some time off because right. he wants to look at some other keepers, and then I think Elliot got injured, and I think Westwood got injured. So too. is that where it came out? Where because I was under the impression that he was kind of a bit annoyed, but it was more. He was, he was annoyed, but O'Neill was like trying to make it out that it was an, a, an agreement. It'd be okay. interesting to see if he's back in the next squad. Yeah, I don't see why he shouldn't be. He I came will. out then and said that he wants to play with Ireland yeah. until he's forty and playing yeah. the World Cup. So yeah. it's, he's not, he's not finished. By so the official line is, we know you. We're yeah. just sitting out for this one. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Doyle, Doyle's actually Doyle's kicking was atrocious. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I see. I don't think he did too much wrong in the in the, he in the whole but, game. But he didn't get that much. You know, as again, he was limited to a lot of shots from distance. And yeah. There was another one the second half from Shannon Aglu. Yeah. Which kind of he made a good save for that. I'll give yeah. him that. Yeah. If I was still a rating, I'd give him a six. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think if I was give most people on the team, I'd be giving him a six because I don't yeah. think there was anything Except special Rice, going on. I, I, I would have scored a goal. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> afraid <laughs> now that people are going to start hopping on the Royce bandwagon and ask him too much of it. Yeah. Because yeah. I look back at the game again today, and while he played well, I don't. And he got, I think Ronnie Whelan in the, in, in the match, he gave him the yeah. man the match. I just, I just think they're blown it way too out of proportion. I think he played very well. Boy. It's because we're desperate. Well, do you not think it's the FAO's fault for player. giving them the number 10 position? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try not to blow the fellow out of proportion. He's number 10. I'll just send around. He even, yeah, even, he even wrote it on his Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. He goes, <laughs> the new Wes <laughs> <laughs> No, no. <laughs> but he came out and he said, he goes, I don't know how he got the number 10 uh, yeah. on his Instagram and said it. So, talk <laughs> about they're putting pressure on the lad. He's so, playing centre back. Yeah, the new cult hero. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just hope they don't put too much pressure yeah. on him and expect him to be I don't the answer. Do and the other thing, like, from my point of view, I don't see things changing because I don't believe that Martin O'Neill has it to change. What do you think? In, in what sense? In, in the sense go back that, to what we've no, I think he, he, I think he can change it from 3-5-2, 4-4-2, 4-3-3. He can change any formation, but his style of play, I think, will still always be go 
60 yard balls and then not support the front net. So you just basically think, think we are limited under O'Neill? I basically think that the next two years are going to be the same as the last four. You don't but if we still get to a, a championship, would you be happy? If we got to a championship, well, we got to a championship under uh, Trapatoni and I wasn't happy because I knew that we weren't going to do anything. And the thing is, when we went to France, you could see that if you take the shackles off a bit, we can play. Yeah, Shay Given actually came out and said it in his book, and he said yeah. that uh, we, we refused yeah. to, to play like Trapatoni. We said, fuck it, we're going out, and yeah. uh, we're going to give it our all. He says it, him mm. and Robbie Keane came out and said it in their, in their team talk. Yeah. But I think... I thought that, that like we've had some good nights on the round here, so I don't. Say oh yeah, no, and I, what what I'm not saying is, and I, he's he's trying to qualify for tournaments. That's fine, but how many games have you watched that you've really enjoyed? They're getting less and less all the time. They're they're always about sitting back and hopefully getting you know a one nil win or or even like Serbia. We had a great result out in Serbia, but for the most of the majority of that game, probably about seventy to eighty minutes of that game. We were on the back foot. We scored early and we scored late. In between, we were under pressure the whole time. Are Serbia that good? I don't think they're that good. I don't think they're, yeah, but they're we, amazing. We had them at the Aviva, he tried to play ball with them. Yeah, and we lost. Was disaster all together. Uh, to be fair to yeah, but I don't think that's the reason why, is it? I mean, you're, you're putting a situation already that you know that you have to be, probably win this game. So you're putting yourself in that situation. So you should be going out and, and trying to play. I don't know if that was the reason why we lost or because we tried to play football. Yeah, like, I just thought we were a lot more open. Yeah, and look, you go back to the Denmark game. <laughs> How open can you get at, at times as well? So I think I think O'Neill has enough reasons in his head. <laughs> more open than a blazer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but he has enough reasons in his head to go back to his default game. I think in his head because he's going to look at those times where where I try where I try to open up and uh, it didn't work out, did it? So well, hence, I think it's, hence it's, that falls into I can't see a change for two, another couple of years. I don't know, like. As Dave said, if, if, if he works on the three five two when he gets the time to do it, you know, yeah. it's all football seems to be evolving, and that seems to be now the new formation. He seemed to try to be gone for a four three three in the last campaign, mm. which because which turns into a four five one really. Yeah, 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 one of the yeah, transitional. That's yeah. the problem when you have four three three. You're supposed to have two wide men who tuck in and, and support that centre mm. forward. But well, that's what we we had McLean and Brady, didn't we? But they kind of again went back then. Yeah, tennis yeah. Is a prop each time up there with long. Long ball. I just li- I'd like to see more of it. Not an attacking. I I'm not saying go all out. I, there's no. You have to have that happy medium. But I'd like to see the a bit more intelligence of how to support and link up with your your strikers and to be able to. No, it doesn't even have to be keep ball in in, in an area. It's about getting maybe even getting balls out wide and getting deliveries in dangerous deliveries in. Maybe that's our game. You know, mm. man, oh, Manchester United of old. They weren't always about. You know, knocking the ball around. They were about getting the ball out to Giggs and Kanchelskis. Now we don't have a Giggs and Kanchelskis, but what I'm saying is they got the ball out wide, and those lads just whipped the ball in. We could, there's no no one. To yeah, say you can't have them. But sort the argument would be is that we don't get enough bodies in the box for those crosses. Is the thing. That, that's in order to play pass football, it's it's about the movement of the ball. It's not actually what the person can do with the ball because mm. professional players can put it anywhere, as you know, they can put it anywhere if you, if they have time. It's about the movement of the ball, and that's what we need to work on in order to be a bit more. Expansive in order to be a bit more wider. There was well, one, well, we had that one it's a very new team. Too. Yeah. There's a lot of players that are actually playing with each other for the first time. Yeah, that was the one example. Hogan made a move that Hendrick could see and he gave it to him. If there's more of that around the park, all of a sudden the passing game can happen. Mm. But they have to work off the ball because too many times when I watch Ireland, personally, I think it's because of where they're told to be. They're just going further down the field because they know where it's going to go. They're not willing to kind of, oh, you want the ball and get on it. I'm not saying they hide. I think it's what the way they're told, I, because Ireland are structured like that, and I think they're disciplined like that, and they'll do as they're told. And I've no issue with that. So that's where I think the trust needs to be put on the players a bit more now to say, right, get on the ball. And I want to see us get on the ball, but more importantly, I want to see us working off. Read the bloody game. Read the bloody game. You know he's getting it. Get into the next position. It's that's the, the only way a passing game works is movement off the ball. It's not what the guy on the ball can do. Yeah, it's what user doing around. Like we have a great defensive strategy, but mm. we just need to have an attacking strategy that goes hand mm. in hand with it that can give us the opportunity. Because I don't think anybody around here like we all want to look in, in an ideal world will we'll mm. play like Barcelona in their prime or whatever. But no, we're, that, we're, this is Ireland. It's not going to happen. Yeah. But I think we just like is look. We're going to appreciate that we will be nice and compact at times, and mm. there will be time we'll have to do the ugly side. But every now and again, just. You know, do something a little more different. But that's you exactly how we like to be. We want to balance yeah. that number one seed. It's, not it's always, about yeah, always, always pretty much eighty percent of our second. qualifiers. Yeah. Yeah. We need to play that. Like Georgia is pacey. My opinion is the reason why we didn't qualify the two games against Georgia. Well, not this, this game, but the how they didn't beat us. 
Exactly. That's the reason. Teams like that, that's where we need to be comfortable and on the ball and dominate a game. Yeah. Proper enforce Ireland. This is who we are, and especially in it's Dublin a, as well. Austria was it's the, even the hype before even that, that game in the atmosphere, game. and we did not show up. Mm. Yeah. I was, well, and I was sitting up in the stands, and it was terrible, because of where I was in the middle, you could see everything, and I was like, they're not moving, they're not fighting. Everyone, 1-11, to 11, it wasn't there. And that, that was, again, the fan, we were all ready, and then they didn't give us what we were looking for. It yeah. Just even effort. Let alone, the, I, did, I didn't see it there. So, so trying, trying to be positives, what positives can we take from the game? Positives from the game, obviously Royce is the ultimate, but I'd be very cool and calm about that. Listen, he played, he was comfortable, he was happy. More of the same, I don't, I'm not too bothered about him. Um, it's potentially a start, whether he goes back to type in October, when the competitive, oh, I'm not Long sure. Kevin Long was it was a positive. Kevin something. Long was more than impressed. He slotted in. He he done his job. You know, he sometimes he you don't necessarily want to see them trying too hard to do something to get noticed. He just slotted in and did his job. So therefore, I was happy with that, and that's what I was hoping for. He looked more comfortable than Clark does. And a lot of the new guys that came in did look that, and that's what I'm hoping for, and that might influence Martin to kind of be a bit more positive and be a bit more. Let's give the lads a bit more trust in a bit more of it. Yeah. And as we said, a bit of a hybrid game. Because we know we can't go toe-to-toe with these teams because we just get back to simple as that. Yeah. And I, I know for one, I'm happy with that. So personally, I'm a bit unsure whether we're going to stick to it. If we do, happy days. We have enough games to slowly get there and try and find a nice little way around this. That I think it's the way forward to be proper competitive consistently throughout the 10 competitive games or whatever it may be. And, I have no problem sitting back and I think, killing a game I think against that, the big boys. Yeah, I think the positives are that he tried a formation that is going to give us a bit more option up front. You need two up front. Um, the three at the back, I think we have the players to play a three at the back, mm. although you have to work very hard on it. And as you said, we get two, three days sometimes, maybe a, a week. Sometimes less. So, yeah, yeah. so hopefully that, that, that he, he can work on that, like you, you had said. The players that he brought in and gave them their debuts and, and uh, game time, that's a positive as well. I just, yeah, I, I, think, there's, I think there's plenty of positives. Like, uh, we're happy with a lot of it. You just want to, you just want to see more of these games that the Turkeys, the, even the Wales France and stuff like that, so. that these games are more 50-50 than 70-30 in their favour. Because yeah. I think we're on and the same level. for that one chance... You know, obviously the famous Wales game, we were praying for that one chance and we got it. Thankfully, we, we took it. But you want to have three or four. Turkey, you know? yeah, like, I wouldn't say they're, I wouldn't say they're far off a level of Denmark, though, to be fair. No, but I don't think they're far off the level of Denmark well. either. Like, the difference is that they had the magic man in, in Ericsson, amongst others. But that's that's the difference with some of these teams. It's like Wales. You take Bale out, all of a sudden they're very ordinary. Mm. Yeah. You know, we don't, unfortunately don't have that anymore. Like, once Robbie Keane left, we don't have that guy who gives that little bit different change the game. and yeah. change the game yeah, so we're going to Shane's call and be our leader but yeah, he's going yeah. to be the one to game changer yeah. Yeah. exactly but so like I've said and I'm, I'm always banging a drum there's literally about six or seven who are light years ahead of us and we'll always play that way and hold on to everything we have and hopefully get that beautiful long ball and long sticks in, in the net against Jamie because that happens once every seven or eight nine ten times we play them and we'll take it but it's being competitive against pretty much as I said 70 to 80% of the games we play we need to be more involved. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny, any positives? Um, I think it's by and large the positives for everybody are mm. the, the new guys, the way they settle in. The, those little moments of, you know, little things that could be been little better, little touches, just little movements, etc. But by and large, most of the players that came in, they settled in pretty well and they didn't really look out of place. Uh, and for me, that's the biggest refresh. And we, I just hope that you know, these guys push on now and the next couple of games, France and the, and the games to come, that, you know, they're kept in involved and we... Just keep this rebuilding process. Yeah, I was yeah. delighted personally to see just the mixture of blend, and he didn't dive in and play all the the new people at yeah. once and something like that. I was really yeah. really happy because a lot of us didn't think that O'Neill would do it. So the fact that he did do of it, course, is, yeah, is no. starting to show yeah. a bit of a change and a positive on his end. Yeah, because yeah. he's been taking a lot of stick. He even sat there with Tony O'Donoghue and didn't argue with him. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And shook hands at the yeah. end. Yeah. Tony, we know you're the fan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I think that we'll, we'll leave it at that in terms of uh, anything we've discussed if there's anything uh, you think we're wrong or right let us know in the comments um, but lads before we uh, let everyone go here um, what what's the deal with your podcast uh, what do you do well, we, what's it based on where can we find it well we're based we're, we're based in Dublin and Lucan but it's uh, the big kickoff sports podcast and we're on SoundCloud Apple Podcasts tune in uh, but it's it's a broad range, so we can go from cricket to football to rugby to 
uh, elite running, you know, Every. ultra running. So we would have a lot of, we had like Killian Sheridan and uh, Michael Carruth on, Dara McAnthony, the, the Peterborough United mm. chairman. And it, it's a broad range. Should we have the other week, Jeremy Staunton, the ex uh, rugby international, Denise Foster for the horse race and for Cheltenham. So it's a, it's a broad range each week, but every sport is discussed and we always look out for the odd as we were looking for, for yourselves. Just the, the fans' view as well. So we, we, we get different... Because we get great fun out of your Arsenal fan TVs or the guys ringing into phoning shows. We usually at least play one at least one clip a weekend because there's yeah. usually something hilarious, especially from West Ham. And we don't take, <laughs> we don't take it too seriously, do no. we? There is serious elements to it, but we try to have a bit of fun with it and, and, and try to get people in. To, you know, we want to have the professional side of it. So we get people in to, to talk about it. Stephen Bradley was on. <clears throat> and we get his view on, on mental health and stuff like that that, that he went through and, and obviously uh, with Shamrock Rovers. But we also try to pick out the few little beauties yeah. that they don't know that we're going to talk about and they'll go, oh, oh, oh geez, you know. So up, yeah. we try and stump them a little bit, you know, just for comedy effect. But yeah, uh, yeah no, we, we work hard. It's on every Sunday. Uh, it's on TuneIn Radio on Liffey Sound 96.4. Uh, every Sunday uh, from 8 to 10 in the morning for anyone who has kids jumping on their heads and <laughs> they have the radio on. And if they're not, yeah, we're on all those podcasts and uh, they'll be up every Monday evening so I think we have about 40 odd shows That's now 46 now, so. two year now yeah we're going and how long has it been in existence since May so not far off what oh, you okay. are doing yourself we actually so. started kind of messing around rehearsing actually when Coleman broke his leg remember that was That's that right. was the first kind of discussion this week a year ago a year ago wasn't that it? was yeah. literally one of the first things we discussed and yeah I was remember that watching that video too many times shocking yeah so yeah no, we're, and we're building it and we're getting better and it takes longer obviously you are a specialised footballing show best so show in the world best show in the world but we're so broad that it takes longer to big, build up because you're trying to build up the all people different and angles, all different angles yeah. so we, we understand that as patience but we're, we're getting there and we're getting we're, we're all over the world we have people from Africa, Argentina, yeah. Colombia, yeah. Which, which Australia. Which is the country we have at the minute? Like, there's, I, can't there's actually decent numbers. I can't pronounce it. It's, it starts with a G in Africa somewhere. I don't <laughs> know where. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> 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 but you, it, you know what? It's probably Irish people all over the world. We, yeah. we have huge people from San Francisco listening to us forever. I think it's the gay element for you, is it? Probably. For probably, us. yeah. Exactly. I'm only messing. There's no issue with that. Yeah. You're just a picture. Yeah, yeah. So we're one direction on the way over here. And he's looking out the window going, you finished yet? Oh, I like a bit of One Direction. Of course, yeah. Will they ever come back? You can slate me in the comments. Will they ever come back? No. I'm not that big of a fan. <laughs> 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 so Can't you tune every now and But uh, if you send us on them links, we'll throw them in the bio so you can check them out. Brilliant. And um, drop a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, there should be a little watermark in the right hand corner there if you're on your YouTube app. Just turn the uh, camera to the side and you'll see it in the corner. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great day.